Hello, my name is Artem and we are in the north of China in Shanxi province. Don't mix it up with another Shanxi province with double A. This is Shanxi province with one A in administrative center of it in Taiyuan city. Many people know Taiwan and north of China as industrial and polluted place, but we want to show you it from another side. We want to show you how Tier Tooth City live, what is they about, and I want to show you that it's comfortable for living and share it from cultural, from historical, from modern side. So let's go and feel the vibe of Taiwan. Behind me, the first line of metro in Taiwan, they just opened it like uh, in December of last year and it's fully autonomous, so driverless metro and it should be cool and really new. Let's go and check. And English, we are going to, for example, Changfengjie, right? And we need a single, wow, face ticket, you can pay with the face here, yeah? but not with my face, I think. Mm -hmm. Got this card. Just, just two renminbi. Can you imagine? Five stations, two renminbi. So okay, I spend this. So actually, it's cool. You can see, you can actually go inside with your face. We go to Changfengjie to just check it out. Uh, they said it's really beautiful uh, metro station. So it's a nice design, it's nice decoration here. Look there, it's really beautiful. It's really cool, I love it. From this side, it's really good. It's good. So it's cool they have piano here in Metro and they have some place for making selfies. So it's not only transportation system, but it's also kind of a social space. You know, people can stay here, communicate. And I think like in winter times where it's really cold here in Northern China, you can stay here for a while. You know what? I spent two years in Shenzhen and when I come here, I realized that they have the same taxis as in Shenzhen. It's BYD uh, brand. And Shenzhen is always saying it's the first city which changed the whole fleet of taxis to electric vehicles. And I checked, it's not true. The first city in the world is Taiwan. More than 4 million people living here and more than 8,000 taxis. They changed in eight months to electric vehicles in 2016. So five years ago. So already like five years, Taiwan is like full electric vehicles, Texas city. Amazing. When you see in the news that middle class in China is growing, you can see it better in this kind of cities like Taiwan, tier two, tier three cities. So for example, here, like in the city center, there are a lot of shopping malls with luxury brands, with all these super expensive cars outside, with the rich kids who are spending money in KTV and clubs, with the cocktails prices, the same with Shanghai and Shenzhen. And people getting rich here, people want more entertainment, people gonna spend more money here in the next few years for sure. So it means people getting rich and it's right time, I think, for many businesses and foreign businesses also to come to this market, to the smaller cities, not tier one, but tier two cities like Taiwan.
So we speak English. Right. Yeah, I can speak. English. Uh, you are from Taiwan. Right. I'm local. And uh, where did you learn English then? I learned English since kindergarten, the school education, you know. And then uh, I go to Merrick as an undergraduate. So I just came back last year because of the coronavirus. So you study in the U.S. And what about after your graduation? Uh, my plan is uh, I will definitely come back to China. So okay, to China, but uh, will you go to the bigger cities or will you stay in Taiwan? Um, so in the past, um, most young people will choose to uh, stay in Shanghai, Beijing, uh, Shenzhen, these big cities. Uh, but now um, my city Taiwan is developing really fast in recent years and they really need some people to join this list to help it become uh, stronger. So probably I will uh, choose to stay in Taiwan in the future. So I understand that young people have any feelings about Taiwan? We found that, for example, many people 呃，从太原年轻人去北京，呃，还是上海发展。那现在的怎么样？现在的话，其实怎么说？其实还是有有一些这种太原，就年轻人也会愿意去大城市去奋斗。但是也有一部分年轻人呢，他们也会选择就留在太原，因为就是太原呢，现在就是近两年我们感觉变化很大，就是它的发展速度，它的那个城市建设各方面呢，就是。呃，发展起来了，然后现在有很多年轻人会从国外留学回来，回到我们太原本地。其实他现在的工作机会也会比以前也会有更加增多的这种岗位。然后我们也觉得就是，毕竟生长在这个地方嘛，肯定有感情的，有感觉的。嗯、呃，也是家里家里人呢也都在这边。然后就觉得，其实这边呢发展也是挺挺不错的。说实话，嗯，外边可能就是机会更多，挣钱更多，但是我们这里呢就会幸福感更强一些，就是看自己的选择。嗯、so we escaped from the city center to the nice, amazing Jingzi Temple. It's just near the mountains. Mountains is just like behind of me, and it's amazing weather. Blue sky, spring, and this is very old temple, 1,400 years at least. And we have here a lot of ancient trees, which are like 2,000, 3,000 years old. Uh, so it's good that you just can take a car, just like 30 minutes, and after this noisy city center, you can get to this chill and peaceful place with this historical vibe you can feel so it's amazing i mean like you know many foreigners think that like north of china is very industrial and smoggy but when you come to this place it's like wow you know and it's different from the southern uh, ancient places you can feel this is uh, where china civilizations come from you know so behind me is uh, one of the main attractions here in Jinsen Temple. It's 3,000 years old cypress. It was planted here in the Zhou Dynasty. And one interesting thing here is another cypress, like 2,000 years cypress, is holding it, like supporting it. That's why it's called Chen Tian Bai. Chen Tian Bai. It means kind of a support the heaven. And here is the mother, Saint Mother Hole which is also this tree protected it from falling 3000 years cypress so it's kind of a nature miracle it's cool so this water comes from that never aged spring and they say i will be lucky and and have a long life if i do like this and then wash ahead of this bald guy you know <laughs> one more time now it's clean enough i think okay
What I like in such places as Taiyuan that they still have a lot of amazing attractions and they are not full of tourists. Yeah, for sure, it's China, everywhere people, but not that many crowds like you going to the most famous places. That's why uh, I recommend you more escape from the big cities and come to the real China and these natural resorts. We are in Taiyuan ancient county, which actually is not opened yet. It just got renovated, rebuilt, and they reconstructed. They made a huge work here. They reconstructed the whole area. It's kind of a small town. And originally there was like 2,500 years ago here. And then it was renovated in Ming Dynasty. And now they renovated it again. And it's not open yet. It will be open very soon this year. And I can imagine how cool it will be. And when it, they open all the things, they will have different performances. They have a kind of Institute of Confucius here. They have different temples and tea market. And the cool thing that they reconstructed the exact place by reading ancient books where all that places were like 2000 years ago. That's really cool, you can feel this ancient vibe here. Here you can see the Christian church. The thing is like it was built here originally 300 years ago uh, in Qing Dynasty. Now it's for sure reconstructed, renovated. But the thing is they save it. I mean like and they show to the world they okay with any religions. I mean like if you check all this news they said like China prohibit the religion whatever. But this is the right example that in renovated ancient city they still keep this uh, historical fact. This is Jingyang Lake Park and it's the largest lake park in the whole north China. And this is a man-made lake. Originally it was a power plant, coal power plant and reservoir, which is like full of really dirty water. And just like in a few years, they changed the whole landscape. They just like demolished this power plant and now it's very chill, very green and a huge lake. And they even have beach side here and a lot of flowers. So you can imagine just like five years ago, it was a totally different thing. And this thing is kind of a symbol of renovation of a new Taiwan because before Taiwan is like very dirty industrial city and now it's becoming a green city. They don't have uh, coal production. They don't have the usage of coal here inside the city. And so they're building more of this kind of infrastructure, green projects, which is great. It's like, I mean, like you can see here, it's not just like, you know, a propaganda when they say we are changing. When Chinese people say, uh, I mean, governments say do something, they really do this KPI, uh, whatever it costs. This costs probably like billions of renminbi. So we came uh, to a brick carving place. It's kind of a factory. I don't know, actually, I don't have any idea. They say it's a very traditional way. So we will check it out. Uh, but uh, the buildings looks pretty cool. And this is the same boss with that restaurant where we saw the noodles performance. Cool. Mm. <laughs> <笑>你做这个也要学习多长时间学习嗯学这个学到做这么厉害的要 我就是干这个干了十多年十多年那比如说我要开始做的话我要学习几个月还是一年两年哦那就是把这两年左右吧两年左右才可以所以不一定他得有没有那这边比如说新来的人他们先学习
几个月吧，然后才开始慢慢做一些不同的东西，是不是？啊，几个月可以做的简单一点，简单一点。We just saw how Master uh, did this uh, brick. One brick takes him from 15 to 20 days and it costs around 20,000 RMB. And what about this, for example, big wall, which they put sometimes uh, in the hotels, in the different like temples, in houses. So most of their customers are businessmen and some government places. So this wall will uh, costs around 500,000 RMB and it takes like 10 people and 3 months to create this handmade uh, brick carving wall, you know. <laughs> so, and the sellers actually is quite high because uh, it's handmade job, you know, and uh, they say like usually month, one month salary uh, around like 15,000 Renminbi, which is a really high salary for this province. Even for Shanghai, it's okay salary, but here, it's like uh, 15,000 Renminbi for sure is good. It's great how the boss of this place developing the company culture. I mean, like they can just put here a factory and that's all, and do this uh, handmade bricks, whatever. But he has this uh, performance hall here, they have a museum, they have a nice square outside with all those buildings and carvings. And that's how I think uh, modern factory, there is a performance there actually. That's how should the modern factory and production look like, I think, for all. And as you see his uh, staff here, they work here more than 10 years and then don't leave. It means like they really love this place and not only salaries. Yeah, I like how they, I love his approach to this place. We spent a few days in Tai'an, Shanxi province, and I realized two things. The first one, tier two cities in China are really okay place, really good place actually for living. It's comfortable, it's have enough international brands, it have amazing people, it's not that high pressure. The rent here is really low, but while salary is getting up, and it's getting better and better every day. We saw an amazing transportation system, a new metro, a new parks, new shopping malls, a lot of clubs, bars, whatever you want. And without that pressure as you have in Beijing and Shanghai. And anytime actually you can get to the high speed railways and then just two hours and a half and you're in Beijing. And the second thing that Taiwan exactly is emerging city. A lot of things happening, a lot of things changing and they have a lot of ambitions and what we see here many of their plans already coming true it's not just the words they're really changing and it's the right time to be here and check by yourself because they keep the chinese culture very good and if you want to see the real china taiwan is the best city to go if you like this video, subscribe, thumbs up, and leave your comment. What do you think about Shanxi and Taiwan and Northern China? Thank you. See you next time.